There's no qualms about it. You cannot beat a steam engine. You cannot. Well, I started in 1959 in Dunfermline. We were actually dieselised, uh, supposed to be in 1967, uh, class 20s, class 37s and Clayton's. But the unfortunate thing was we had to get the steam engine back because they were unsuitable for the jobs that they were acquired to. So really, we were back in steam in August uh, 1968 when we finally become dieselized. The object at, uh, at that time was I was wanting to become a driver, a steam driver, and diesel was, I'm afraid, was not for me. I've enjoyed driving. Uh, that's why I've had a full career at it. I was 15 and started on the railway at uh, Middlesbrough Shed at uh, Newport, uh, and I was made uh, five minutes 16. Uh, on the push and pull on the G5, it was made past firemen in the 60s and I moved on the southern region at Norwood Junction uh, and then I left there in 1975, went to the Moors Railway, North Yorkshire Moors Railway, I was there five years, uh, left there and then started back on British Rail again uh, till I retired and uh, and then I heard a friend of mine was uh, operating manager here and he asked me if I would uh, give a hand, or would like to give a hand here, which I did, and gradually I've been here ever since, I've been operating manager, and, uh, and now I've retired again, and now I'm uh, volunteering. I had the connection with Type 1s uh, while I was at Thornaby, and uh, we had them on the, the main line, mostly on local traffic on freight turns. But really good, they were uh, smooth riders on the main line, yeah, and uh, no problems with them at all. I come back into STEAM in 1980 uh, as a Railway Preservation Society and I really enjoyed just, just to get the smell and it was just a, a different uh, attribute altogether coming back into the, the ways of STEAM. The locomotive 80105 was built in Brighton in 1955. Well, the locomotive is a 4MT standard tank engine. It basically for short distance uh, passenger. The water was the main uh, problems uh, as such uh, for this type of locomotive as it had only 2,000 gallons of water and there's not a lot of running you can do on 2,000 gallons of water. And I, I believe that this was in Barry and it was rest, uh, restored at where it is now in uh, the Bowness Railway. So it uh, is on loan in that to help the Wensleydale Railway in that do a steam excursion and it seems to be doing rather well. Class 20s were built as a 1,000 horsepower mixed traffic locomotives. They were designed primarily with small trip freights in mind. And uh, the, sort of the era I more remember was when they realised that you, know, you couple two together. If you couple them together nose to nose, you then don't have the restriction of only having one cab because uh, you've then got a cab at each end and you've suddenly got 2,000 horsepower uh, with an awful lot of tractive effort. Their key feature was that they could pull just about anything anywhere. It might take them some time, but they'd get it there. I like most diesels, uh, but uh, this is a particular... Uh, it's, it's real friendly for heritage lines, being uh, only 75 tonne. This one particular one is one of the early ones. It was built in 59. Uh, and it done work at uh, Finsbury Park, its first uh, allocation. 
the local was retired in about 1994 or 95 uh, and then uh, in the Scottish region it was uh, restored uh, and uh, we've hired it for the summer season. On a heritage line uh, we're down to uh, a maximum speed is 25 mile an hour and these with only being a thousand horsepower you can actually open the throttle up for a little while uh, and hear the English electric engine working. This morning I was out of bed at uh, 6 o'clock. The fireman wasn't here, obviously he was travelling, so I started the fire up. Now from it being uh, hot, shall we say, that, uh, from yesterday, it would take approximately two, two and a half hours because the, the boiler is still really warm and so is obviously the water inside. But if the engine was what as we cry in the railway, stone cold, it would take approximately eight hours. Yeah, this diesel locomotive can be prepped in about 15 to 20 minutes uh, very quickly uh, and started. Uh, the, the, the biggest delay is just when it's pumping its air up, uh, which it needs for braking and controls, etc. The other preparation, when the fireman is out on duty, he does uh, his duties, which is more or less preparing the engine from the cab point of view, where the driver, he'll do what is known as the locomotive motions, which would be all the side rods, the mechanical lubricators, the big ends, small ends, the axle boxes, there has no lubrication problems with it at all, it's just a, like a car engine, you, it's filled up with oil and all the driver does is check the level on the morning. And it only needs fueling if you fill the tanks up uh, for the mileage it does about every three days. In the middle of the run we have a temperature sheet which has to be adhered to uh, every day for, uh, for hot axle boxes. They will be tested with um, an electronic gun which tells you the temperatures of each and individual item that is requested on the sheet. At the end of the shift the engine we will be disposed of with um, the steam chest rather high, 200 pound per square inch. Fire low and uh, water in the boiler at least three quarter glass. Therefore, when we come in to the sidings, the tanks will be topped up, the boiler will be topped up at the same time that the, the steam chest from 200 pound per square inch it will be dropping as you're putting cold water in the boiler. Once the boiler and that is full, it will come down to the running shed here where there is a, a concrete path where the ash pan will be unloaded and then inside the engine there's what is known as a rocker grate and the rocker grate will dispose of the fire embers that, that's in the firebox. By this time there will be approximately 120 pound, which is enough, more than enough actually, for the steam brake to control the engine and it will be rolled in its own power into this shed here. It was tabled and uh, more or less the saying is put to bed. In the evenings uh, when we're going to dispose of the locomotive, it's just a matter of uh, putting the handbrake on or the parking brake, shutting the engine down. Uh, and then uh, we have what we call the battery isolating switch and lighting switches uh, to uh, switch off. And uh, basically uh, you can leave the locomotive. This is local to us and it's something we've been meaning to do for absolutely ages. They've been up. Had a chat with the driver, looked in on the footplates. Jack actually sat in the 
um, on the driver's seat. For my young girl, this is the first time ever on a train, so it's been fantastic that it's been steam. So, yeah, it's the romance and the experience, really. The farmer basically is responsible for looking, as the name suggests, after the fire, but also after the water. I'm retired, um, and to me, I love coming to Wensleydale Railway. It's a nice, friendly railway. Much as I love uh, driving the DMUs and acting as a guard here, uh, probably my first love is, is steam engines. So I'm here today acting as, as fireman, but uh, also uh, I've been able to drive uh, up and down the line today as well. The Class 20s, the cab is at one end. Now, if you're running forward and uh, you're working a train and if something goes wrong, you can't hear the detonators with the noise. Now, if you run from the other end, there is not much sort of you can do if you meet uh, anything coming the other way. The most difficult part of the driving the locomotive is the visibility uh, when uh, driving uh, the nose or engine first. And that's why I require a second man so he can watch out at one side of the loco, similar to a steam engine. But one of the reasons uh, that they are still going with a single cab is that you can put them nose to nose and single man them so you don't have to have a, a sec what we call a second man. I grew up with diesel loco hauled trains everywhere. I never really had the choice of diesel over steam because I was born in 1966, steam had just about finished. These were big, powerful English electric engines and they were something that I really liked the sound of. Had I been around 10 years before I was and had the opportunity to travel behind lap fives on similar services, then I may have fallen for those in a bigger way. English electric is probably my favourite. The sound is just good. 20s and 37s and still around on the main network They're working for DRS and e EWS and things today. So obviously they were very well made. I managed to travel behind 194 of the class and given that 228 were built I think I've done really well and I'm about a thousand miles short of having travelled 100,000 miles behind class 20s. Diesels are very temperamental. If one small part of the engine goes, the diesel, I'm afraid, is stopped. It's not worthy. A steam engine can go something wrong with it, a valve, etc., and it will still work. That's the difference between a box and wheels and a locomotive steam engine. A niggling little thing, which could let them down. But in general, mechanically, they rarely failed. Um, unfortunately, if they didn't have any coolant in them, they weren't going to go. I think the stuff that came out of the workshops in the sort of late 50s, early 60s, like this Class 20, like some of the BR standard steam locomotives, they were both quite simplistic in a way. Yes, the diesel locos are perhaps more complicated than the steam locos were in terms of what could go wrong but they're nothing like as complicated as the stuff that's running around now where you're relying on uh, computer parts and things like that. It can't be a steam engine. You just can't. It's just the love of a urine control and it's doing what you're wanting it to do. When I started, it was all steam uh, and then we went over to diesel. Uh, but uh, if I had a preference, it would be steam. Uh, but I like the diesels as well and I, I enjoy driving both. As long as the, the public, the passengers, they come along and they'll say, thank you very much driver, it's been a good day, it's been nice, etc. And if, if they're happy, then it's job satisfaction for me.